What's the word, y'all? Today I'm doing something nobody has been brave enough to do. I'm gonna watch every single foul Joel and B drew through the 2023-2024 NBA season. 295 fouls in just 39 regular season games. Now, over the last four seasons, Joel Embiid has led the league in free throw attempts per game twice and have come second two other times. And the guy he was second to is Giannis. But when you hear conversations around the association when it comes to drawing fouls and free throws, the conversation is dramatically different between Giannis and Joel Embiid. And we're going to tackle that in today's video. Now, if you're new around here, I am a new true NBA fan. And that's why I'm doing this experiment. I'm not a Joel Embiid fan. I'm not a Joel Embiid hater. But I am going to be objective when I look at these fouls. Joel Embiid has become one of the most polarizing players in all of basketball. He's so polarizing that he even believes that he's probably the most hated NBA player. And he doesn't know why. And again, as a new true, I'm going to try to break down some of the reasons why Joel Embiid is hated. Again, I, I don't, I'm not saying these are, are real reasons. He should be hated, but just some examples of why he might be. The whole purpose of this video is the foul drawing, the foul baiting, the flopping, have you want to categorize it. That's one. Two, Joel Embiid spent the first seven to eight years of his career known as Troel Embiid on Twitter. You can't troll 29 different fan bases and think that everybody gonna love you. And three, he is one of the most talented players in basketball objectively, but he does not have the postseason success to back some of that up. Those are three of what I would say the main reasons why Joel Embiid haters would hate him. But again, I'm neutral here. So uh, welcome to my <laughs> to my spreadsheet for today's video. Um, we're gonna categorize all 295 fouls in one of five different categories. The first category is just real. This guy got contact, a whistle was blown, nothing else involved in it. Category two is a foul but it was exaggerated. And, and now that I'm looking at it, did I spell that wrong? I guess it's not super. Did I spell that wrong? It don't, it don't really matter. Um, category number three is completely a foul bait. Category four is a complete non-foul, but somehow got the whistle. And category six is very similar to category five, but it involves him being a superstar. We all had conversations about a superstar whistle. Today, we're trying to see how many times he got that superstar whistle. Now, this is not a 100% science. It does take some... Um, interpretation from yours truly. But again, I'm gonna try my very best to categorize all of these and y'all gonna be along this journey with me. Cause I mentioned the conversation between Joel and B drawing fouls and Giannis drawing fouls are completely different. Even if over the last four seasons, their averages have been relatively the same. And as a neutral, I can recognize that in order to be very, very good slash a superstar in basketball, you have to be able to to draw fouls. Whether we like it or not, it is a part of our game. It's easy points and so on and so forth. We do have our um, anomalies like a Steph Curry who can average three free throws per game and still average 30, but everybody else that is considered an elite level score is averaging somewhere between five to 10 free throw attempts per game. So it's a part of the game and it's an important part of the game for these superstar players. But the conversation around Joel and Beats when it's just a little bit different. So let's jump into it. And if you're wondering how we're doing this, uh, we're going to go through every single game. Again, there's only 39 for Joel Embiid this season. And we're going to say, like, Brooke Lopez, he fouled Joel Embiid here. We're going to watch this clip. And we're going to do this for all of the fouls. The first foul of the season, only it only takes a minute and a half of game <laughs> to get to that first foul. Oh, my God. Legendary numbers. All right. So, this is on Brooke Lopez here. And that is categorized to me as a foul. That's just a foul. He may have screamed, oh, but that is a genuine foul at one to that mark. Number two, under the basket. Now he now now we did we did get those arms filling up a little bit and a yell. But I think that's pretty, pretty genuine, man. Three guys around him. <laughs> Sheesh. Um, I think that's pretty genuine. Um, look at Danny Green. Oh my god, Danny Green used to play basketball, huh? Um, that's real. I think that's real. That's two. Uh-oh. I think we may have got our first one that's gonna be in a different category. Which one we put this one in? He's gonna try to get it at the elbow here. Jay Crowder comes in to try to swipe at it. And the whistle comes so late. And I think that's because of the sale job from Joel and B. If we if we go frame by frame, if oh, can we go frame by frame? If we go frame by frame, Jay Crowder's going for that ball. Maybe there's some arm contact there, but that looks like a lot of ball. But we do get a flailing of an arm, a yell, and a very late whistle. I think, huh, I'm going to count that as a non-foul, our first non-foul. Like, there's a science to this, y'all. There's a real science to this. And again, I'm neutral here. I don't really care too much about how many fouls you draw per game or whatever. But there's a real science, whether you like it or not. He sees that Giannis puts his arm down, 
So he this might count as a foul, but category. Because I, I do believe that's a foul. His hand is in there, man. He exaggerates it. But I think that's real. I'm gonna say that's the first foul, but exaggerate it. This might be our first superstar whistle. This might be the first superstar whistle of the video. They call that a foul. It's on the ground though. They don't give him a shooting foul here. But Dame comes over to help. And I don't know if Dame even touched the man. I like, maybe? Oh yeah, he 100% touches him here. He 100% touches him here. I think a lot of these are gonna go into the foul butt category because that is a foul, but he's he is exaggerating the contact in order to make sure he gets the whistle. That's objectively a foul there. That right arm or that left arm from Jakob Pertl is into the body as he goes up and it's even holding the shooting arm. And it's that, that's a foul, but he's selling it enough where it looks weird. I think this one is a superstar whistle. You can argue for sure that it is a foul here, but it's also like so minuscule that it should probably be a play on. Like no, nobody, nobody was hurt there. Joy Lebee didn't, I don't know. That, I think that might be a, a superstar whistle one. We're like, it could probably go either way. Now Scotty Barnes is an extra foul. And to me, I think this is just good foul drawing. Gets the contact, follows through, and even celebrates. And look, he celebrates, and he asks, why would the city of Toronto hate me? That's, <laughs> you know, you gotta, if you're gonna talk, you gotta stick behind it, JoJo. This game versus Portland was pure domination. Like, all of these fouls so far have been just genuine fouls. Killer offensive glass, get the rebound, get hit in the head, foul. You know, like, that's a real foul. Here's an interesting one. Here's an interesting one. Pick and roll. A lot of these end up being Tyrese Maxey pick and rolls. Get him in the air. Like, a, a, oh, that's a tough one, bro. That's a tough call. <laughs> hey, he's a character, bro. Up by 20. Tries to wrap him up for the foul and one. DX, X, like, crotch chop. I don't know why people hate me, though. Like, yeah, Shobo, do your part. I love when you do it. <laughs> you gotta know. You gotta know. Everybody not gonna love it. Went to game number four, and, and majority of our, our things are looking exactly like this, right? Real foul. Genuine foul. I know Scotty Barnes do this, but I don't think that negates the fact that this is a really a foul here. Is it the strongest foul ever? No. But there's enough contact right there to classify as a foul. So this is where we are through the first five games. I kind of got rid of non-foul and superstar whistle because I'm finding it that, that that they're the same thing. So I just consolidated it. But as you can see, majority of these fouls are just genuine fouls. No theatrics. Just a man getting clobbered. Uh, we do have a couple times where he did do what we would consider foul baiting. That when I say foul baiting, I'm, I'm referring to like that clip I showed with Giannis, where he takes advantage of the fact that Giannis's arm is in the cookie jar, so he goes up a very specific way to draw the contact. I see nothing wrong with that, but you know I'm counting that as his own category. The real one again is just him getting hit, uh, exaggerated. We already went through this, okay? But that that's where we're at through five games. Now, this is a slow start to the season, free throw-wise, for Joel. And I'm looking at the game law. Oh, boy. We got... All right, let's just lock it. <laughs> hey, hey, man. There, there's bright... And there's light at the end of the tunnel, Wizards fans. Um, look how... Look at this effort, by the way. Okay, start off here. Jordan B has the ball to start this play. You're going to see Jordan Poole sitting there trying to draw a charge on a man that's not even moving to start off with. He skips it over to Toby. Toby pump fakes, drives. It's still a huge mismatch down here. What a bad try to wrap him up type of play from, from this man, uh, Jordan Poole. That is about as easy of a real foul I've ever seen. The reactions to the fouls are pretty interesting too. Like here, Chris Stapps tries to wrap him up and he gives a foul on me. Uh, symbol, obviously, real foul. But uh, you get a bunch of different reactions to a Joel Embiid foul. So in that game versus the Celtics, Joel Embiid only drew three fouls, which is really low. That's the lowest we've seen in a single game. The game after this, he goes against the Pistons, and he draws enough fouls where he shoots um, 19 free throws. Oh, my goodness. Um, and then we also had the game against the Wizards where he shot 14 free throws, really taking advantage of, like, the teams with... Let's say young or bad front court. Oh yeah, we got the nasty courts back, baby. That, that's, 
Hmm, how do we classify this as just Stuart fighting through the screen, but I mean like really fighting through it? That's probably a foul exaggeration, right? Or is that a superstar whistle? It's one of the two. It's so very interesting how many times this has happened since I've started watching, where again, I think this is gonna go into the foul baiting category, where he sees uh, Asars Thompson's arms out, he's gonna go into the contact, and what's what I'm interested in seeing is how many times he shoots the ball, shoots like the motion, but the ball goes backwards or straight up, um, just like this. You see, it's just like, it's so immediate, right? He does it, he comes down, eyes locks on to the ref. Boom, are we gonna get it? Okay, we do get it, but I'm counting that as a foul bait. But again, that don't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. That's a 19 year old rookie putting his hand in a cookie jar. Let's take advantage of that. And cause he did it twice, really. This one is tough. I'm having a really tough time categorizing it because you're gonna get the contact. Like we see this level of contact a lot in basketball. Um, so it's contact for sure, but enough contact to blow the whistle and one is, is I'm, I'm just struggling either, whether this is a, just a real straight, a real foul or a really good superstar whistle. Oh man, this one is, whoa, Re, just rewatch it. They called that a foul there. Um, as you can see, the left arm of Miles is right in that right side of JoJo. And if you look right here on my cursor, it's that you can tell that, that JoJo's got his hand in there. And the whistle comes so late. It comes so late. And Miles, he just argued the last three fouls. I ain't even showed you. So he decided he ain't even arguing this one, bro. I, I'm, I'm counting that as uh, a superstar whistle, honestly. That's what I'm doing. At the 10 game mark, this is where we sit. We got 31 real fouls, 13 fouls, but seven foul baits and nine superstar whistle call. You know what I should have been tracking this whole time? How many fouls lead to him being on the ground? He's always on the ground, bro. Every, like that's a real foul, it's a genuine foul. I counted it as a real foul. But they all end up with him on the ground. And with his injury history, bro, if I was a 76 er fan, I would be at the edge of my seat every time he hits the deck, bro. <laughs> then you get this one. <laughs> what a foul, bro. What a foul. The hardest foul of the video. He loved tap on the shooting arm. And I guess, I guess we count that as a real foul? I mean, Clinton gonna do like that, but like you, I can hear the contact on the broadcast. But then, I don't know, bro. I might count, I don't know how to count that one, dog. I'm thinking real, but part of me wants to go to Superstar Wissu just because the contact, contact looked almost non-existent, bro. Who would've thought watching fouls would be fun? I'm having a good time. This game, Joel B shot 21 free throws, ladies and gentlemen, 21. So let's see how we get to 21. Pick a roll with Maxi. got Jay Wheel on him. I mean, that one, that, wh 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 I got an idea why I'm classifying that one ass. I got an idea why I'm classifying that one ass. Here's another one. Uh, Joel B fights for this offensive rebound, grabs it. I think that is on Dort because Dort gets in underneath. It looks like he was trying to take a charge, but Joel B goes straight up. Yeah, it says that this is a foul on Dort. I mean, I, yeah, I guess. This is a really interesting game, by the way. There are a few of these where Jordan B's trying to get uh, inside position on the smaller Shea Gills Alexander. Shea's got his arm wrapped up in Jordan B's arm, and I think that's where the foul comes in at. But Jordan B just goes straight up, and they count it as on the floor. So it is on the floor. But again, I think that counts as foul baiting because he, he ends up wrapping his arm in with Shea Gills Alexander here. This is late in game. Scuff there. Yeah. Take the contact, real foul. And then these last two are intentional fouls to end the game. So we're in game number 17. I think this is the, the most non-foul slash superstar foul call I've seen so far. And yes, it's against the Wizards because apparently they played against each other four times in 17 games. It makes no sense to me, but here we go. Daniel Gafford by himself and literally didn't touch him. The, the whistle, the whistle was blown by the time, like they did do a little clap at the apex, maybe. The whistle had already been blown. You see his hand is already up. The ref's arm is already up. So this is undoubtedly a non-call slash superstar call in this one. I don't know what 85 is seeing out here. I'm with Gaffer with the reaction. 
I ain't seen, I ain't seen enough. Now this one, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was there. I'm telling you, bro, this is my favorite part about a Jewel and B foul, bro. Ayaka Kagu gonna get called for this foul. He still goes through with the shooting motion and the ball just goes straight up. <laughs> it's such, it's so funny, bro. Uh-huh. Just, just shoot. It's like form shooting without the ball. Actually, look like he lagged. Like he playing 2K and he lagged on his jump shot. But it is a foul. The call is not really relevant in this one. Um, James Wiseman played 15 minutes this game and fouled out off the bench. Because he was getting cooked. Oh, my God. What a move by Joel Embiid in this play. By himself. No help. Oh, spin off. Wait for his contact. How much contact was it? I don't even know how to classify this one because... He's literally not touching him in this frame. <laughs> He's still not touching him. 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 Still not touching him. Still not touching him. And whistle. Uh, I think I'm counting that as a superstar whistle, my guy. Uh, <laughs> frame by frame. The only bit of contact here is this at the leg. And Joel Embiid getting the contact on Wiseman. And Wiseman is like... What am I supposed to do? Oh, here's another James Wiseman foul, by the way. Hand in a cookie jaw. Hand in a cookie jaw. So that was game 20. And here are our numbers so far. It's actually pretty even all around as far as the fouls, but the foul baiting and the superstar whistle. Uh, we still got 19 more games to go, though. Now, the tracking data isn't perfect because they said this was a foul, but no whistle was ever blown for a foul. So we might not get all 295 of them because they said this was... A foul and they really just didn't give him the call um even though he really 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 wanted that call crazy enough i remember this foul i would hey this is the only time i care about joel and me foul when it's against my team i was so pissed let me see if i'm still pissed second time around yes i am yes i am even though it is a foul demar de rosa did that all season long too but I'm still mad at it because against my team. This is another game I remember watching live and it ended up being a Joel Embiid masterclass. 51 points against the best defense in basketball. How many of those fouls were actual fouls? We're about to find out. Um, see, you see what I mean about the tracking data? Oh, no, that's considered a foul. Okay, there's a foul right there. Cat, man, the reactions, brother. Oh, man, that's such a tough one because obviously his hand is in there. It definitely counts as a foul bait. But what's his hand in there enough? Let me see. Let me see. Ooh. So it's in, as you can see, on the, on the top right here, as he's going through, Cat's hands are there. And then by this time, he pulls him out. Just a nasty, nasty play right here. Ah. Uh, they called that a foul on Nas Reed. I don't even care no more. He was hooping. We're entering game number 32 of 39. And the reason why this one is elite it's because this is a 70-point game versus the San Antonio Spurs. First foul of the game comes 30 seconds into it. And it's Champagne getting in there and three free throws for Joel Embiid. But that is a genuine foul. I'm counting that as real. Foul number two, the same thing. Gets Wimby in the air. Same move any other basketball player will make. It's so interesting to see how many different things Greg Popovich and the Spurs tried to do to stop this man. And he was still just unstoppable. <laughs> Just unstoppable. He was going for that 72, boy. He wanted that 70 bad. And they caught that on the ground. Oh, and one through the contact, I guess. That is the longest continuation I've ever seen. The foul comes right at before he picks up the ball. That's the foul right here. That's the foul right here. We still got three seconds. And he still goes up and one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's done. I've spent the last three hours watching every single foul that I could on NBA.com. Um, he drew 295 total fouls on the season. NBA.com only accounted for 262. Again, some tracking data stuff here and there. But regardless, I think 262 of 295 is a really, really good sample size. I've plotted every single foul between our four categories. Here are the results. And again, this is not a true science, but it, it was fun. Even though, again, I'm looking at fouls. Not the best shots, not game winners, not crazy dunks. Literal fouls, one of the most boring parts of basketball. I watched all of them, but here are the results. So, of all of the ones, the 262 that we got accounted for, 120 of them I deem to be the, just the real straight-up, straight-up fouls. That is 
45.8%. The second highest part of the pie chart, we got 22.5%, and those will be deemed as foul baiting. And again, my def definition of foul baiting in this one is, is drawing contact without the attention of actually shooting the ball. So the little rip throughs without you actually, that counts as a foul bait for me. Again, everything has its place in the association. I'm not saying one thing is good or one thing is bad. Next, we got one vote apart or one foul apart between a foul that's exaggerated and a superstar whistle. For me, those superstar whistles would be like a phantom call or a call with just a small amount of contact that you're like, man, if the 12th man on the roster got that same amount of contact, he probably not getting a foul. So that's the results. And this is one thing that I really, really uh, took into consideration when I was watching this was, or maybe not took into consideration, one thing I noticed is a lot of the fouls that Joel and B drew were really, really timely. What I mean is that the opposing team is on an 8-0 run, and to settle some things down, he gets to the free throw line. I also noticed that he got to the free throw line a lot as we get further into games as he's got less of his own legs to get to that free throw line to recoup some of that, that stamina, that injury. I think it's all meticulous in the timing of things. But there were some fouls that if I am a fan of the opposing team and that that was to be called a foul, I would be really, really upset about. So did my opinion about Joel Embiid change throughout the course of the video? video? No, not, not really. I still think he's one of the best players in basketball. I don't love him anymore. I don't hate him anymore than before I started this. So it's been about 24 hours since I did the last part of this video, but I got a few more notes, so let's jump into it. We talked about how the conversations around Giannis and Joel Embiid foul drawing is dramatically different. And I think the reason for that is Joel Embiid, more than any other star in basketball, seems to be reliant on getting to the free throw line. Now, Lord knows if we took free throws out of the game, Joel Embiid would still be dominant. But if you think about in, in the way that Joel Embiid gets the fouls versus Giannis gets the fouls, it's night and day. Well, yes, every single star in basketball is guilty of foul baiting Giannis is no exception to that but a lot of and I would guess majority of Giannis's fouls is I am faster than you I am stronger than you I'm gonna go through your chest you either gotta foul me or I'm gonna get an easy layup while Joel Embiid's foul drawing ability is more meticulous oh your hand is in the place it shouldn't be let me wrap myself through it to draw that foul and just the general public the general NBA fan is gonna respect the 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 contact and the force of a Giannis foul versus the meticulous and IQ based fouls that Joel B draws. And yes, the lack of postseason success is one of the reasons why people are so pissed off about the foul drawing ability. We only looked at the 39 games of the regular season. If we were to go through the playoffs, I would guess the pie chart that we had would just be different. The whistle was different. Now, and, and Joel Embiid's defense, he only played 39 games and he only played, what, three games before he came back from his injury and just thrown into the playoffs. But there were times in their playoff run, which was, what, six games, he felt like he got lost down the stretch because he was Gas. And what would a gas Joel and B do? He's going to rely on the meticulous aspect of drawing fouls, and that may lead to a flop, him flailing his legs, his arms, and that again is going to turn NBA fans off. In the postseason, Joel and B drew nine fouls per game in that six game series. That is Really, really good. Second on his list is Jalen Brunson at 8.4. But if you look at Joel Embiid's history throughout the playoffs, we've seen his free throw numbers drop in the postseason because the whistle is different. Now, Joel Embiid, this is weird to say because Joel Embiid, I'm pretty sure, is older than Giannis. But Joel Embiid is at a point of his career that Giannis once was when it comes to the general narrative around him. There were times before Giannis went on his championship run where people asked, will his style of basketball translate to the postseason? Could he be the best player in the world if he has not had a long postseason stretch? And Joel Embiid going into year 30 or 31 still hasn't made it to the conference final. So those conversations are not just the same as Giannis, but amplified considering he already has an MVP but he hasn't had a conference finals appear. And some of it is, of course, by his own doing, right? Not performing well in some series that matter the most. Also having bad luck, whether him having a stomach bug or him getting injured a month before the playoffs and then he has to miss that month and get thrown to him. There are a lot of factors here, right? But the fact still stands that Joel Embiid has not been that playoff riser like some of the other stars across basketball, like uh, Nikola Jokic, who seems his number, see his numbers go up every time he's in the playoffs, or like a LeBron, or even like a Giannis. Lord knows it's been a long time since we've seen Giannis really in the playoffs, but he, over the last couple of years, when he has been healthy, has been a guy that can give you 50 in a closeout game while shooting 90% from the free throw line. While Joel Embiid might have a game like that here or there in the postseason, he hasn't been able to get over that hump. And part of that is that it's just hard to be dominant in the postseason when you're reliant on, on free throw attempts and the free throw attempts are not coming. And he, he's such a hard player to talk about because, again, we can't deny 
how talented on both sides of the floor he really is, but there might be this one part of his game that he needs to evolve through in order to hit that next step. I think that's it when it comes to the Joel Embiid foul drawing. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave it a like. I kind of want to turn this to like a series where like I watch every single Steph Curry three-pointer and some, some, just some super fun stuff like that while we wait for the next NBA season to start. Um, I'll see y'all soon.